This month marks 50 years since man first stepped on the moon, a giant step for mankind and one which today scientists and astronauts are hoping will be followed in the very near future by many, many more. The goal, to build a moon village, a permanent dwelling for humans, almost 400,000 kilometres from Earth. Well, to tell us more about that and space in general, we're joined by France's first woman in space and the first European woman to visit the International Space Station, astronaut Claudie Agnoret. Thanks so much for coming in. And Ms. Agnoret, I know you're very passionate about this moon village but your passion began almost 50 years ago because although it was 4 a.m. here in France you got to watch those first steps on the moon live. Yes that's true I was 12 years old at the time and it was for me really a wonderful moment I would say with uh, um, this community of human beings being there looking to this dream for me it was a dream becoming a reality and that's true that it was very important for me my imagination and then to be bold to take the opportunity to become an astronaut so for sure without that I'm not sure that it would have been. It was that moment where the almost impossible became possible. Absolutely. Now you did go on to be a doctor including a mm -hmm. neuroscientist before mm -hmm. you went to reach for the stars. I mean how did you get into the astronaut side of things? Well there was a um, call for candidacy to become an astronaut from the French agency, the CNES, and I discovered this paper on the wall in the hospital where I was working as a rheumatologist. And it was clear for me, it was obvious that I had to try it. And I did and it. it. Worked. <laughs> because it takes, afterwards, it takes something like 11 years of training before you get to mm -hmm. actually uh, go into orbit. What is it like, though, to fly above the Earth? Yes, it, it has been a long way with a lot of uh, work, training, simulation, but discovering also new culture. I had 10 years life in uh, Russia, near Moscow, for the training and discovered this multicultural environment for the, the, the station. And really I was impatient, eager to go there. 11 years after the selection in 96, my first uh, flight. And the reality was even more wonderful than the dream I had in my head as a kid. So I discovered a lot. I did a great work with scientific teams. We had great time with all the crew on board. And it was the beginning of this cooperation in between America, Russia, Europe. And it was really a wonderful landscape. Because indeed, space seems to be the one area where internationally cooperation seems to work. Absolutely. Uh, I would say that the International Space Station is also a wonderful diplomatic tool because we work all together with different cultures, with different technologies. And uh, Europe, for example, has a scientific contribution, technological contribution with different and people partners. people share their knowledge. Yes, sharing. As well as now there is a new I would say a new landscape with the Chinese, for ah, example, yes. that are coming. We are speaking about the moon and we know that there is an automatic probe on the far side of the moon from the, the Chinese. So it's a mix of uh, competition and cooperation. And that's why this idea to have a kind of village on the surface of the moon is something that is not just a scientific objective, technological objective, because there is a lot to do, but also something that is dealing with the humanity, doing all together something that is an expansion. Tell me more about this moon village, because to me it seems literally out of this world that it's possible, and, and you know, from what I'm hearing, it wouldn't even be light years away. Uh, uh, the moon is uh, an hostile, I would say, environment for human beings. There is no atmosphere, there is variation of temperature, there is radiation, it's far away. <laughs> and uh, that means that to build a village and permanent infrastructure, we will have to overcome a lot of difficulties about energy, about life support, uh, about using the resources in situ in order to make sustainable. So why do you think people would want to move there? You know, will it be mostly scientists that you envisage? Oh, yeah. going? There is this scientific objective. It's true that we have a lot to learn with, uh, with the moon. There is technological development in order to overcome these difficulties. And there is also, and you, you know that, private enterprise that are now dealing mm. with space exploration. This aspect of tourism, the aspect of exploitation of resources, the aspect of development of some economic sphere. But we can imagine people going and coming to the moon, you know, 
pretty regularly? That means that we will have to develop uh, um, access tools with a rocket that at the very beginning will be for a few people there. But then in this 21st century, maybe there will be more and more persons. That means that there is a difference in between what we lived in uh, 50 years yeah. ago. Oh, that's true. It was exploration for a very short duration and the longest mission was a three days mission. Uh, and now we will learn how to live, to work permanently on the surface of the moon. So two different paradigms. How close are we to getting to that stage? I mean, I believe uh, there is plans of using the dust on the moon to Absolutely. make 3D buildings. So we will need uh, using the resources in situ. That means the dust, the ice that are there for uh, oxygen and to, to, to build and to pr protect against uh, radiation. There is a lot of probes, automatics that are robots that are preparing this phase. And I think the first crew of the 21st century on the surface of the moon plan for the 24th, 25th uh, year. And then progressively, we will have an expansion. Would you not go? permanently to leave the mm -hmm. Earth, it's not the, 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 the question, <laughs> but to go further to explore further. Would you and like also to, to be learn. one of those people to go and live there for a couple uh, of months? If I'm called to make a training to be an astronaut on the moon, yes, I will say yes immediately. Absolutely. For Mars, I have some doubts for the time being. I think we have a lot of problems to be overcome before going there. And just tell me briefly, I mean, what's it like having spent, you were, I believe, two weeks at a time out there in mm -hmm. space. What is it like to come back down to Earth, both physically, because I know you were the first woman, I think, to command that Soyuz capsule during re-entry, mm -hmm. and also be, given that you're a neuroscience. I mean, how is it, how difficult is it to come back to us? Uh, for a short duration flight, you have this uh, uh, cognitive and motor, I would say, uncomfort going there and coming back. But it's very quickly uh, adaptive, uh, adaptable. Uh, for a long duration mission, you have the problem of the bone of muscles yeah, and readaptation yeah. because of microgravity. It's not a condition. That for must feel very strange. So that's wonderful to be there and <laughs> to, 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 to live and move in, my, in microgravity. But coming back is something that is a long process for the readaptation. On the moon or on Earth, we will be in low gravity. That means that's not microgravity and with the they are walking on the moon, the rover has a rolling. It's not microgravity, but I think this aspect of living in this such an hostile environment will need more physiological, medical experiences in order to be able to and, do it. And perhaps for a lot of us still, it seems quite frightening to take that risk of being plunged into outer space. Uh, I think there will be a great uh, appetite. There is really a motivation for the, the young generation and I would say a young generation that is uh, um, eager to protect the planet, but also eager to discover, to explore. Mm. And that's a progress for with science and technology. And I hope really they will participate in it. Great, a whole other debate to be had there, but we're out of time, Claudie. Anyore, thanks so much for Thank coming you. in and giving us a taste of your experiences and what possibilities may lie ahead.